This is the medium backpack that we're working on today. So um, I have my warp set up. You notice that I have my centers marked and I'm holding it down with a spoke weight. Now the reason that um, I'm walking you through this is because I've had a lot of people, a lot of beginners that have said, oh, you know, I'm just starting out and I love your tips. So those of you that already know this, bear with me. Uh, beginners, this is for you. So um, it's really important when you start on this basket, the, you're going to do the center stake first and it has to be under this first warp. You'll find out later why, but it's imperative that you start underneath the first warp. So then this is just over and under. Over and under. And then I want my center mark here to line up on the center mark there. So I have, how many stakes do I have? Nine, I think. So I'm going to do four on one side and four on the other. You always mark your stakes on the rough side of the uh, material. And the reason you do that is, is because you want the rough or, let's say, ugly side to the inside of the basket and the pretty side on the outside of the basket. Makes sense, huh? So um, I'm just going to quickly get these in here. And then what we're going to do is we are going to twine around the base and lock it in. Now, if we were making the large backpack, which we are not, we'll do that later, we would be putting in chicken feet, which is a very cool technique that I learned from Janet Greenhow. And if you know or knew Janet Greenhow, very cool lady. I went to a, a class taught by a, or a, a group of Janet Greenhow's basket makers and told her, Janet, how do you make backpacks? Because I do not get it. And she taught me all her cool tricks, which I'm now going to pass on to you guys. There is no mystery to making an Adirondack backpack. The thing about it is learning how to shape it. And the way you learn how to shape it, believe it or not, is to use a measuring tape. And then you know where you're at in the basket. But we'll get there. Right now we're just working on the base. I have to tell you guys something when I'm leaving this base up. So, okay, I've got four here. This base is going to true up to eight and a half by five, I think. I'll check that and make sure. So I'm not going to mess with it that much right now because I'm going to have to true it up anyways. Let me get the other four on the other side. That will give me a total of nine. Unless I totally screwed up here. So now I can pretty much get rid of that spoke weight. It just kind of helps me out. It's one of those essential evils you have to have it for just a small amount of time but it sure does make life easier if you use it and actually if you had just a piece of metal you could use that books you can use them but they get your book wet so if you don't want to write your book get a spoke white it's worth it okay so two more and then i'm going to twine and lock the base and actually i'm going to trim my base first and then I'm going to do that. So, I hope that you are getting inspired by some of the stuff that you're seeing on groupies. And just to let you know, um, videos from now on, all future videos will be on the groupies member site always first. And, and I think probably always there, period. That gives you guys exclusive access to them. How's that? Okay, so we're going to true this guy up to eight and a half by five. I'm going to check that measurement just to make sure I'm not um, talking story here. Okay, it is eight and a half by five. So eight and a half. So that means about four and a quarter from the center. So here's four and a quarter. Eh. I'm a little bit long. So, I'm going to bring that over and measure it again. Yeah, I'm going to tighten it up a little bit. Four and a quarter. Still needs a little bit of tightening up. 
And here's the thing about reed. Water, is that's pretty good, is the glue in reed. That one's got to tighten up. So if this were dry, these guys would slide really easy. And I'm not telling you to wait till they dry because then you'd be waiting forever. But um, it is a good thing to know that if you're making adjustments in a bas basket and you have the time, like once you get it woven, woven up, if you wait overnight and let it dry and then pack it down, you can get it tighter because that water makes the reed expand, of course, and makes it tighter. That's about four and a half. So let's check this and see what we got. Eh, we're about nine. We're going to call it good. And this is about nine. We're going to call it good. And you'll notice that in all my basketry, that's got to come out a little bit. I am not exact. If it's a you know, quarter of an inch off, good for it. That's good enough. That's five, and that's five. So then I'll just adjust these a little bit. We call that Jill's wing it basketry. Okay, so that's pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and, now I'm using uh, number two round to do this, but usually I would use number three. This is just available. So I'm gonna take this and put it in a loop. It doesn't matter which guy you start behind, but I usually start behind something that is under one of these last ones. And then I'm just gonna twine. So twining in front of one, behind one. This is a good place to show you how I add ones that's that busted. So let's say I got a tail coming back. Now normally I would pull this out because I'm not that far along, but it's a good place to show you this. Okay, when I am adding, a weaver, when I twine, I pull up the dog tail and stick in the thermometer. You'll never forget it that way. Pull up the dog tail and stick in the thermometer. I'm sure it comes from being a dog musher. Okay, so here we go. Now, some students get thrown by a corner. Remember, you just twine it. So when you come to the corner, you want to make sure this is tight. Remember, it's in front of one, behind one, right? So, it's still in front of one. The only difference is you're changing the direction. Okay? And then come around here, in front of one, behind one. And also notice that when you are twining, you always use the back weaver, never the front weaver. And if we were using the front weaver, that would be a chase weave. Also, you know when you're twining because you have these cool little X's in between each one. If you don't have X's in between your stakes, you are not twining. Okay, here it comes again. We're going to go over the top and over, over one and under one. So I'm going under. I'm just changing the direction. Changing the direction in my life. Okay, so I'm going to tell you guys a joke as I go around here. And I'll take all your jokes that you can give me. If you can't get something in tight, you can take your weave right tool and kind of tuck that up in there. If I can find my weave right tool. Um, here's my joke. This one is for Ann Bowers. And she loves this joke. I'm being facetious. Okay. Why do gorillas have big nostrils. I'm only using that because I can't find my weaver tool. Um, why do gorillas have big nostrils? Anyone? Anyone? Because they have big fingers. I know you were waiting on that one. Ann Bowers told me to never tell that joke again, so that one's for Ann. Very good lady. If you get a chance to take a class with Ann, do it. She's awesome. Okay, so once again, I'm coming around to that corner. You see that pop just a little bit, but I'm going to keep gathering anyways. So, once again, in front of, behind. Just change the direction. So I'm going to come around here to my last one, and I want to make sure that I finish this so that there is actually a stroke on that one. 
And then I'm going to um, turn these up a little bit. And I'm going to lock in my twine around the base. Just open that up and pretend like this guy's not here. That's what you would do, turn that up. Open that up. And there you go. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to keep the front. This is what I'm saying is the front. Make a decision. That's the back. These are the sides. Okay, so the sides and the back are going to be upset. You do not upset the front. Okay, so that means I'm going to upset. These are nice and wet, so I can go ahead and do this. If they're not, then wet them before you do this. You know, a little crunch is cool. We like the crunch. It means that it's happening. It's going to stand up for us. Life is good. Okay, so there's my sides. And here's my back. So the back is straight. The sides are straight. We want a belly on the front. And that is what makes the Adirondack backpack. So um, I'm going to clip up these corners. And then I'm going to uh, get my weaver soaked. And we'll go on to the next part. Now I'm just going to clip these guys up in the back because I want it straight. And then we'll start on the weave. So step one. 